topic I've been given is working with young ladies, working with young ladies. And the slides are, have been projected so we'll be able to follow through. And in Pacho, this afternoon, the topic now, yeah, dear my and say, um, say, yeah, young ladies, eh, yeah, Juma. And see, say, yeah, kind young ladies are men, kase, and mebnu, and kwa, because I believe in the tree, mebnu is more of teenagers. But when we talk about young ladies, it includes teenagers and those probably a little bit older um, than teens as well. So probably in the bracket of 13 to 35 years for young ladies. So, the first thing we want to look at or to try and define is the purpose of the women's ministry. Um, have a look at the history of COP UK in the context of the women's ministry. And then how do we define a woman? What is your perception? What is your understanding of who a woman is? So we know that the purpose of the women's ministry it exists to support the holistic development of the woman. Into Bibi Biara, Efa, or Bahunu, the women's ministry, no, ye jina hose, ye be bua, na, ye be ma, eh, oba no watum pong. Um, the ministry as well is there to encourage women to pray for the church and intercede for the leadership of the church, to help women to build a strong family life, function as a good wife, a good mother, teaching the women how to keep the home how to raise children, things like cooking, nutrition. So anything regarding the life of a woman, basically the women's ministry's role is to ensure that we are able to impart this knowledge to the women in the church so that they'll be able to serve the society, serve their community, serve their families. And then also, um, the women's ministry is also there to render support as well to the needy in the community. In Tisa, you're born to a Women's ministry, you're a general say, a bed bomb pie, I'm a sorry, no, a son, I am no, a general say, a bed church there, a young who's senior, your bed, CSC, a young who's senior, a best way and fee, senior, your best way and quala, a senior, your bed, yeah, dear, and you're not, you're about a Merco meeting, I am him say, your best year be be effa, a man who I be boa or young cassa, your bra bomb, and yet, and no qua, and you're the community, no, so. Thank you very much, Mommy. <laughs> so, Mommy will help with the interpretation. We wanted it to go a bit faster, but I think if Mama Esther helps, it will be good. <laughs> right. Next slide, please. So, sorry, stay on this slide for a minute. So, the other thing as well we want to also look at is the fact that in the history of COP, when COP started, <laughs> Um, there were lots more older women or older people in the church. We hadn't got to a stage where, um, you know, we had a lot of younger um, ladies or young children or youth in the church. And and so, um, when from that perspective, um, we realized that any time we met as women's movement, it was basically us, the older women that were meeting, because that was the demography at the time of the church. But now when you look at the demography of the church in the United Kingdom, um, as you can see on the screen, we are a membership of 19,000 at the moment, as at the end of 2018. And so at the moment, when you look at the 13 to 35 age bracket, we have 45%, which is equivalent to 9,000 young people, teenagers and young adults within our church. Yeah. 
That's, that's basically what Mama Esther has said. So basically, <laughs> the demography of the church is changing. It's not just us, the older women, but we've now got to cater for the younger adults, the younger women that are in our midst. And it's very important that we actually um, seek to, to, to know that that is the case. We need to know that that is the case that we and are in. And she says, I saw her name. Now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm not sure what Hallelujah. And then going on to um, Vision 2023, as we say, and you know, and we realize that our chairman is very particular about um, the young adults in the church, the teenagers in the church, the young ladies in the church. Uh, so I've got two um, sort of quotes from our chairman on the screen there. And one of them that I think is, you know, very notable is the fact that he said that any society that hates its youth and children has no future. And and then he also spoke about the fact that um, for Vision 2023, possessing the nations is not a thing for old people, but uh, it's actually for young people because they will take our dreams and they will run with it. So, again, when you look at the Vision 2023 document and the women's ministry, um, there is a very specific point there about the Virtuous Ladies Group, which the National Women's Ministry will speak about after this presentation. So in the document, it states the fact that um, the women's ministry is to work with the youth ministry, the young ladies, to bring them up and to prepare them for the future. And as we know, the theme for this year is I will build my church. Now, young, and the young ladies as well have a part to play. And Next slide, please. So one of the things that we need to, to do is to understand our young ladies. And, and I've just listed here a few attributes of our young ladies in COP UK, which I would like us to um, look at. So the young ladies that we currently have in our church are people who are highly skilled and professionals in their jobs. I mean, you go, you speak to certain um, young ladies and the positions that they hold in their workplaces is quite fantastic. You know, senior managerial levels, they are doing lots of big and great things in their workplaces. And the young ladies, um, you know, in, in the church as well, I would say are of a different culture. We know that we are from, you know, our native land, and we've probably come here to settle, to adapt, um, and to, you know, work in the land and everything. But our young ladies, some of them now have actually been born and raised in this country. So the culture is totally different from what we have known. 
Ese ye hwe ye mabunu nu nso a. Wo monte ye ese ne ye tete ye wo Africa no. Na ye hwe ese ne ye tete wo mo nso wo eh bibiri mu ma mu eh abrofo ma yi mu ye. Na wo se esu no wo mu suban e na su no ye suban. Ye ne ye no nso enso nso ye edem. And that's um, mainly to do with the environment that they've been brought up in. Um, probably contrary to belief, um, I believe that our young ladies are willing to learn. And they have an inquisitive spirit. Why? Because um, even through the educational system in this country, they are encouraged to ask the question, why? Because they want to know, you know, the source, the ins and outs of everything that they are doing so they can have a full understanding of anything that they do. And that is not a bad thing. Yeah, because I believe that um, people who ask questions are actually very intelligent people. And then our young ladies as well are, are adaptable. So they can, you know, if you give them something to do, they'll be able to add their knowledge and their insight and, you know, change it into something which even becomes more beautiful. They are very adaptable. And and then the other thing as well about our young ladies is that they want to be understood. Yes. Yes. And then also they want a voice at the table. So if we're doing something, they want to be involved in the discussions because they believe and they know they have something to bring to the table. And so I want us to um, take these points as positive things, not negative things. Next slide, please. So recently as well, we did um, a survey and we asked um, mainly the, the teens and the, and the young ladies. You know, yeah, what, so, yeah, yeah, about the, about the women's ministry, what we can do to make it more appealing to them, more attractive to them. And these are some of the things that they said. So the first thing, which I think is, a, I put it as number one, because it's something that's really on their hearts. On their is that they are highly misunderstood. <laughs> so, so they feel sometimes like um, when they come to us and they present something to us, we can't understand where they are coming from. And then they also feel misjudged. So a lot of the times you hear um, phrases like, oh, the young people, they are disrespectful. So it's a blanket statement, everybody. doesn't matter whether you've met them. And then So whether you have related to the person or not, that bracket is there. They are disrespectful. They are this. And that's the kind of names that we give to them. So they are misjudged. They also feel 
underrepresented. So again, I think now these days um, we, we are doing quite well in terms of leadership um, in our local executives, district executives. They are not really present in those kind of positions of authority to be able to take decisions. So they are missed. They are underrepresented. Eya na ye bu anga bo mfia sa na o mo dwe ntisi ye ye bibi kura ye nka wo mo emmem um but these days i believe that now we're having younger deaconesses being called um in and stuff which is very good so na nse ye kra thank our leaders and our national head and all those who have gone before yeah, us yeah da ye papa ne ma se se e ma bunu no so ye do mo ba e ma somfo adwumani the other thing as well that um they mentioned is that they feel like we don't have a relationship with them. We don't draw them closer to ourselves. So, so there's no there's no friendship. So they can't they don't feel comfortable to come to us. And then as well, they feel that sometimes in the women's ministry and programs and activities that we run, there's not enough relevant activities for them. So we're always talking about marriage, always talking about children, always talking about something to do with older women, but when it comes to them, they feel out of place. And as And then the last point I've put here is that it seems or it comes across as if um, we are not willing to hand down the baton, and I'll explain. Next slide, please. Montiano, say, say, young Pessy, I did that too. I'm almost so alpha. But I couldn't So we have the problem of the baton. And no, I never want more a how. And when we talk about the baton, what exactly are we talking about? We're not talking about um, um, power in terms of trying to take over from us. But the legacy of what the women's ministry is about. So I have this picture here and I've asked the question, what do you see? So I'd like a few people to just give some responses. What do you see from the picture? Can we get a mic, please, so we can just get a few responses? But uh, we could see that they are running in a truck. Uh -huh. okay, thank you. Yes, we can see they are running in a truck. Yeah, I can see some uh, one hand over a button yes. to the other person. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll carry on then since I think we've, we've, give, we've got a few responses. So as you can see from the picture, when I saw this picture, I thought it was a very good picture because personally, I thought one of the things that maybe somebody may see is the person's green hair. Green hair. So, so one of the ladies hey, there has got green hair and sometimes that is how we can perceive our young ladies. We see them at the first instance and all of a sudden we judge. But what you can also see from the picture is highly trained athletes. You can see passion. You can see determination. 
And then you realize as well that the lady in front, um, I think from Jamaica, those in green, um, she's running ahead, looking forward, whilst her colleague is handing the baton over to her. So she's uh, quite focused. Oh, sir. Well, ordinary simricana o tunuso, and then you are bidden, then you are. Need me an so episode, they are banamana or jiwanichi. So, so what does this tell us about working with our young ladies? And then a chair is a quire near Mabun Ebenanti. The legacy of the women's ministry. A melku, a jumadin, a den, a chair. What are we going to hand down to our young ladies? What do we want our young ladies to learn from the women's How do we want them to take over from us? Are we equipping them enough to be able to take over from us? Before these ladies you know, got onto the track, they would have done lots of training together. And I believe as well that every single time in their training, they'll discuss various strategies, different ways to be able to rein the waste. What we'll do when we get onto the track. If something happens, this is what we're going to do to fix it. And and so you can also see, like I was saying, the lady in front, she is actually running. She's not standing still. And it's a, it's a strategy in, in the relay ways, which basically helps the momentum to carry on as the, the person before is handing the baton over. And no, 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 inculcate our young ladies into the ministry, it means that the young ladies need to see us being excellent in what we do. Because that is the example that they will see and they will follow. And in that verse, 1 Corinthians 9.24, it says, do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one will get the prize? And it says, run in such a way to get the prize. And so it says, run in such a way to get the prize. So the race that we are running is we are building the women's ministry. We are building the church. We are working towards building our faith. And so it means that everybody has to come on board. Everybody has to go through the training. And those of us who have gone ahead need to be able to train those who are coming behind. Next slide, please. So like I was saying, we have a legacy to pass on. So uh, Proverbs 13, 22 says, a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. So we can ask ourselves a, a question as deaconesses, what inheritance are we leaving within the women's ministry for the And then I've written three points here as well that I want to bring out in terms of sometimes how we react to our young ladies, which uh, sort of prevents them from getting close to us or prevents them from taking up that baton that they're supposed to take. So one of the words I've written there is indifferent. So basically what I mean by that is that a lot of times 
we don't really engage with the young ladies. And Whether they do well, they succeed, or they don't succeed, we don't really, we're not really bothered. But if, you be, but if you believe that the women's ministry is, is a good inheritance, just like any other inheritance, if you're going to hand it over to your child or anybody, you'd want to make sure that the person knows the value of what they're getting. You want to make sure that the person also knows how to handle that inheritance that they are getting. Na say ye di tu mu ye say me ku ni ade a eye de a. Na o wo say ye ma ye mani hunu. E say ade ne ye. Na mko na anu su hunu say ade ne de eye. Eye japade a ne bo ye de. Eye adwuna de a eye a e say bi so. Na say ye tumi ma wo mu hunu say ye adwuna de papa de a. Wo so de aho ni be so. Na say ye ni ho a o mu so atumi de a ye adwuma. Na wo so de a kire wo ma. Some sometimes as well um I hear feedback from the youth or the young ladies, um, that we have an attitude of can't, won't, don't. And again, I'll explain. Sometimes we are like, I don't want to know anything about the youth or the young ladies. I won't do anything with them, and I can't do anything with them. And then the other thing as well is sometimes as well, um, we feel intimidated by them because of the skills, the resources, the talents that they have. And so when we see them performing and doing well, sometimes better than ourselves, we get intimidated. But remember that Jesus said we will do greater works. So if we have done great works and our young ladies come and do greater works, and you're born. Now say yeah, yeah, yeah. Now say your money be yeah, near my case, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not sin. Thank you. So, so, so it actually means that the legacy that you had, you've been able to pass it down well such that it will have a long lasting impact and effect within the church and within the society. So sometimes some of the examples or some of the things, for instance, I've heard, um, just to put things in context. For instance, um, a young deaconess has come to church early on a Lord's Supper Sunday. And then she's prepared the Lord's table. Now and then an older deaconess comes much later on. Now, uh, dismantles the whole thing. Now, and then she does it again. Because she feels that the young deaconess didn't do it the way it was supposed to be done. But then after the service, she didn't call the person to explain why it was wrong and how you should do it the next time. So this is an example of um, not handing over the pattern very well. So if we're actually um, afraid that, oh, our young ladies are not going to know what to do, it's because we are not teaching and training them. Thank you. Next slide, please. So, what are some of the things that we can do to overcome these hurdles and help to integrate? So, the first thing is we need to have a change mindset. 
And I think that's that's probably the biggest. All the other ones, I think, come under the change mindset. So when we look at the case of the Samaritan woman, initially nobody really wanted to interact with her because of her past lifestyle and everything. But when she was transformed and she met Jesus and she went into the town, everybody listened to her. They had a change mindset. But and then again, within our mindset, we need to remember the ultimate goal that we are building the church, and everybody is needed to build the church. Hallelujah. Another thing as well we can do is to just be respectful of each other. If you give respect to a younger person, it doesn't make you less of an older person. And so, as long as um, a young lady has been ordained as a deaconess, she's a deaconess. She, does, she doesn't, she's not a lesser deaconess because you've spent 20, 30 years as a deaconess and she's just come in six months. She's still a deaconess. And sometimes it's like we know that obviously as older women we have life experience we have wisdom that is a given and I'll come to speak about the young ladies themselves but even the Bible has commanded us that we should respect one another so 1 Peter 2.17 says show, show respect to each other okay. um, next slide please trying to run quickly because of our time. So the other things as well we can do is acknowledge the talents and the skills that they've got and allow them space to thrive. Give them opportunities. Give them responsibilities to do. And all of those skills and talents, they will bring it on board and it's building the church. Let's mentor them. So when we talk about mentoring, we're talking about teaching, we're talking about training, we're talking about explaining. Why do you do things the way they do? A lot of times young uh, people, especially within our church setting, they see things outside, they're like, why don't we do things the way they are doing things? So we need to explain, not just say, that's how we do it. Explain the reason behind why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> So an example, for instance, in the Bible is um, Ruth and Naomi. We can see that Ruth and Naomi had a very lovely relationship and Naomi taught Ruth a lot. She'd come from Moab into a new land, so we should have taught her the ways, you know, the culture, everything. And then even to the extent of helping her or supporting her to even find a husband. And Ruth listened to all of this. So they worked in unison and worked together. So you hear Ruth and Naomi. Who said Ruth and Naomi and Chiba and Memo? And you hear Naomi so threatening. Hallelujah. Amen. 
And then in Titus 2, 3 to 5 as well, it talks about the fact that the older women should teach the younger women. So it's actually a command given by God to us to actually teach. Next slide, please. I'm going to run through this quickly. So again, be intentional when you're... So uh, we want to be intentional and actually go out of our way to reach out to the young ladies. Don't wait for them to come to us, but we are going to go to them. So we're being intentional. Also be innovative in the type of events and programs that you run. Get their input. Find out from them what are the things that you'd like to learn. What is it that you'd like to know so that you can work together with them to, to bring out events and programs that will help better their lives as well. We can think about young ladies' conferences in our locals, in our, um, in our districts, to encourage them as well to be part of the women's ministry. And then, as stated in the Vision 2023, partner with the youth ministry. Get the youth um, executives involved as well. Find out from them what are things that you like doing in your youth events, and then let's tailor it towards the young ladies. And share best practice. Maybe, for instance, you've heard that Salem or OCP is doing a women's event, and because they have a high number of young ladies, you realize that the, the lot of the programs they do is very tailored towards them. So you may have maybe a, you know, a, a smaller group, but you can ask, phone the, the district women's leader up. Oh, how did you do this program? You know, what were the reasons behind you doing it? How, what was the feedback from the young people so that we learn from each other and then we're helping again to build the church and to grow together. Uh, Hallelujah. Okay, next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, so again, some of the topics, for instance, that young ladies would like us to treat in our meetings for them, or specifically tailored to them, um, is career, identity, becoming a woman of worth, entrepreneurship. Um, we have young married couples as well, so we can speak to them about managing the home, finances, work-life balance. So these are the type of topics that they will be interested in, you know, coming for a women's ministry meeting. I was saying, I know I'm a casa, a fat woman in Kita who die, a juma or ye, and eh, near one more person or more ye, set or bar, a bemanayo or bar or swimbo, near a near more person or ye, and I fear Nancasa, a who see a sea, and it is a view of person or yansaw and we're juma, and I say a dear day, a woman in I and Yama, a essay yetre, not fear ye chicha woman. Okay, next slide, Almost done. Okay. And then as well, um, one thing that I think will help them a lot is for us to give them space to mold their unique culture. In the sense that obviously we are from back home, we've got an African culture, um, they've been brought up here, and so they've got the British culture. And sometimes they're too clash. Um, they want to do something, let's say, based on their culture, but we may have challenges with what they're doing. So let's again teach them what our culture is about, why we do things this, the way we do things, and give them the room to mold their own culture. As long as you know, we have those basic um, principles of respect and all those type of things which are good in our culture, other things which are not so, how should I say, not so relevant, let's give them space to explore, and then I believe that you know, eventually, they will come out with something which is a good blend of both cultures. Eh, say a shah. Over say yantitia wo a bibidi mumemu. 
ene e ha no mo so entete ye na enso nso ne awum enti e wase ye ma mo te ase ye 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 no ho entete ye na e ha no mo so entete ye ye de ma won na won so wan kasa ye ja ye kire kire won na won kasa wo jai na won so wa fa won ho adwe e hu kwa ya won so be fa so a o mo be kasa na e ma no mi enu abom na o mo atumi ene ye anya anyonko fa enti ni se ye tumi no mo nya sa anyonko fa no na ye kire kire won a na ye ma won kwa na ye hwe won so ni awo mo di firi mu ba no na e be boa ni e moa ne ni atumi ato ye bo a kire kire won a e be boa won a mo won atumi aben ye na fe ye no mo atumi abom aye adwuma and then the other thing as well is let's not assume that they know maybe for instance you see um you know a young lady or a young person doing something don't assume that they know better teach them e ma ya ni se o mu nim se wa ho so aye o we do nim ade pa we do o ye se e ma anya wa dwen sa e bia o nim de a wo nim no o nim enti se ya nya ya dwen se o mu di o mu nim dada na ya nya wa mu sa yeah, it's gone a bit crooked. Men oh, na 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 So there's that aspect of well. And as I say, yet church, you say, oh, adi no sa na ye no. And this is the reason. When ti anso na ye ye no sa. And next time, omu ba sa adi no hombe hunsa na hombe hombe tutu nyama. Amen. And then the very last slide, please. So here again, I just wanted to showcase some of the things that our young ladies are doing out there. Most of us, for instance, may not be on social media, so you may not know certain people, you may not know certain things that our young ladies are doing, but we have many of them, for instance, who are PENSA presidents, PENSA executives, they are leading people of 30, 40, they are presiding elders in their own right. So they have a lot of skill, they have a lot of knowledge, they have a lot of wisdom. They are able to pull things together and make things work, which I must admit, some of us, if we were left to do some of these things, we probably won't be able to do it. So let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Give them the room, give them the space. And I believe that as we do that, we'll really see all the goodness that God has put in them come to light to help build the church. <laughs> Presiding elder, no dear, me can't say. Me in front say, Ebia, Obi Wawana, or your pensa president, Ebia, ni um, ni pana, e wawa, ah, all chomo, di anase, all leader, mono. Ebe ya to say local assembly. Inti anu na me kase, omu to say, eh, presiding elder, and alright, that's what I meant. Hallelujah. Amen. Inti impacho, um, you're the best, see her.